Hey guys, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a GMC Silverado here, four door, six foot bed. It is a 2015. Customer's complaint is the engine is not running right. He said it stalls and everything. He towed it in. He says it stalls, it's running terrible. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. Um, let me pop the hood real quick. And where's our release right there? Okay. And it could be an ignition wire issue, who knows? Let's see. Oops. Oh! That's actually a surprise. That's the first one I've ever seen. That's the new 4.3. I have actually never seen one before. Interesting. Okay, let me, uh, oh, I've got a tow truck pulling in here. All right, let me, uh, hang on one second. Let me wait for the tow truck to stop. All right, guys, so let's start this thing up. Let's see what it does. I've learned to open the hoods now, so this way maybe you can catch whatever's happening because sometimes the noises and stuff happen real quick. Woo! That's not good. That is not just a misfire either. Holy Christ. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to pull this thing over to the shop and I'm going to have to figure out what's going on here. But that's not just a misfire. There's something else going on there. That's that's severe. So, all right, let's uh, let's get this over to the shop. This thing runs so bad, I barely made it to the shop, and it just died on me. Um, something's going on here. I'm wondering if the AFM, the the uh, basically the um, system that shuts down active fuel management, shuts down two cylinders to make this thing a four cylinder. I, I wonder if there's an issue with that. Because this thing's just running downright terrible. Uh, let's uh, let me see if I can get it started again. I cannot believe the check engine light is not flashing. You can see how bad this thing's shaking, right? You can Wow, this thing is running terrible. Okay, let me uh, let me get my scanner and let's see what's going on with this thing. So with the scanner hooked up, got a map sensor code. Well, map sensor is going to be an issue, especially if this thing's got a bad misfire from like the AFM being messed up. Uh, let's see, misfire detector, it's not telling me what cylinder, EVAP, vent sole, I'm not concerned about that. Ignition relay circuit, test failed since DTC clear. Hmm, okay, I don't know what that's all about. That's not going to have anything to do with the misfire, so I'm not concerned about that. <laughs> Excuse me, just yawned. All right, uh, let's see. Let's go to data display. Misfire data. Oh, yeah, look at that. Let's see. Cylinder one has a history. See how the numbers go down? All right, cylinder one is the most prevalent, obviously. Hmm, okay. Like I said, I really think this thing's got an issue. I gotta find out what is the AFM control, which two cylinders? Is it the first two? One and two? It might be. I don't know. Let's just see if this thing's will it actually show misfire? I've had it before. This is weird. I don't know why. I've never really paid too much attention to it because it hasn't really affected me all that much. But one, two, three, four, five, six. I've seen it where the car can have an active misfire. The car can have an active misfire and not show up, and that's exactly what this one's doing. That's current misfires are not even showing up. Look at that. 
wow, this thing runs terrible. One thing that GM did that I actually like, I didn't realize this. See, the motor stalled, but now the AC itself, the fan turned off. So this way you don't kill the battery. I can't see how, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people just sitting in the car with the key on and the blower going for whatever reason, and they wind up killing the battery. It happens way too often. This is actually a good idea. It's, you know, basically sensing RPM and shutting itself down. That's actually very smart. Good idea there, GM. Um, yeah, I got a funny feeling there's a problem there. Let me research this a little bit. I want to find out a little more about the AFM system in this thing. See what cylinders it deactivates and go from there. I got a funny feeling I'm going to do a compression test and find it's got no compression. So let's, uh, let's go that route. All right, so I pulled the decorative cover off or the silencer pad, whatever you want to call this, off. I'm going to actually pull this valve cover off because... I am confident this is going to be a valve issue. Did you hear, like, it almost sounds like it's popping through the intake, like a puff-type sound. And usually what that's from is that's from, um, like, the intake or the uh, combustion charge popping through the intake. So I'm thinking we're going to find something in there. Uh, all right, yeah, so let's do that. So really, so far, this is pretty darn simple. Just disconnected the coil wires to the coil, disconnected the coil connector, and I disconnected this. I don't know if it's PCB. I guess it is. On these, all you got to do is push in on this, this little thing here, and that will release the piece on the inside, and then it'll pop right up and off. So now I just got to get in there and get all these tens off to hold the valve cover in place. Let's get that off. And let's take a look. All right, so I got the valve cover free. Off this off of here. Hang it up. I don't see anything off the, oh yeah, there we go. See that? It's a broken valve spring. Can you see that? Okay, so that's what the valve spring is supposed to look like. See that one? So now, hmm, okay, can we fix that in the truck? It's possible. It's possible. If it didn't hit the valve, it's very possible. Uh, it's possible it didn't hit the valve. The only way we're going to know for sure is we've got to take the rocker arm off. And I'm going to have to take the spark plug out. And I'm going to have to compress put uh, compressed air in that cylinder. I've got to make sure the rocker arms are down. Um, or actually, I should just take both of them off and uh, do it that way. Yeah, that'll work. Let me take them both off, do it that way. I'll take them both off, then put compressed air in there. Let me see if I can get a valve spring for this thing. It's uh, worth just trying, so pretty interesting. All right, let's go from there. So there is a glimmer of hope. I have the rocker arm off. The rocker arm itself looks fine, like nothing got damaged with it. Obviously, I have the exhaust one off too. But if I grab the valve, it actually comes up to the same height as that valve. Or at least it seems to. So now I took the plug out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my leak down tester. And um, I'm going to grab my leak down tester. And then I'm going to put compressed air into the cylinder. I'm going to pull that valve up and see if it seals. Because if it seals, we're golden. So there we have my leak down tester hooked up. I have no air. Go well, I have air going to it. But it's not on right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding air to it. And as I add air, it should start leaking down almost immediately. Which it is. Now I'm going to pull the valve up. And it did it well. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It bent the valve, unfortunately. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear it coming through the intake. I mean, some of it's coming through the crankcase. 
that's obviously not the issue. The main issue is it bent the valve. So it looks like we're gonna wind up having to pull this head off and replace that valve. All right. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the top of the valve with a hammer if it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, that was one mistake I just made. I just I just lost the keeper. It fell down there. I'll find it. Not a big deal. And I just gotta be careful so I don't lose the spring. But I may just try putting a spring on it just to see how it runs. Because it's also possible with the cylinder being at the at the bottom of the cylinder bore, it's possible that compression is leaking past it. I have seen that before. So let me see about getting a spring. Hopefully I can find that keeper. If not, I'll just get a new keeper. But there's still one in there. So, And as you saw, that popped up. So I got a funny feeling there might be carbon on the valve that'll clean off once I start it. Um, but yeah, let me do that. Uh, with the one keeper on there, it's not going to fall out at least. So let me do that. Let me, uh, let me set that up real quick. All right, so unfortunately, it's actually going to kill this video right here because we can't get the parts until next week. So... No, nobody local has them uh, coming right from GM. So I'm just going to end this right now. But next week when I do that repair, I will show you that. But you see, I did make a, a pretty bad mistake there. When I tapped on that with a hammer, I should have somehow protected the locks to keep them from popping out. I should have done something like that. But I didn't. Should have. I didn't. Um, like maybe put like a something on top of it and hit that. This way it didn't jar the whole thing. Um, Whatever, live and learn. I mean, it fell out. It didn't fall into the motors. I'm okay with that. So, got new locks coming too. All right. So, anyway, that's it. Hopefully, you're getting something out of my videos. If you already hit that like button, if you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep friendship.